Right, welcome back to the Woods Garage. How are you doing? Uh, today's going to be a little catch up, just you, me, and the camera. Penny's at work still. It's up off free early shift. I do get them now and again, they're very, very rare. Right, today I wanted to work on something on the bandit that has been donated by my very good friend Duke Dyson. You need to check his channel out, he does some amazing editage, and he's one of the idiot collective as well. So, they popped over the other day, just about minutes after we stopped filming the last bandit video and produced this now it's not an ammo tin it is um dave's an engineer um which means basically a clever mechanic that can do maths and everything now dave said that this comes from uh, a tool he used to go in there like a, a big drill chuck tapered drill chuck and they were for keeping them in at his work and there's a few of them going spare and he managed to rescue one before it went to the scrap bin now it's a sheet metal box uh, approximately 20 gauge maybe 18 gauge it's strong enough for the job now i was thinking of making a battery box out of that scrap there which i can do still and i will use but this is going to give me far more because it's already a box it's already folded the lid's not going to be of any use because it's too shallow for the battery the battery's taller and it's too wide to go in between the frame rails Depth wise, it's perfect. So really, what I've got to do is cut some of the length out and take the lid off. And then when the battery's in it, it will poke proud. I'll just use the old rubber battery strap, you know, just put a hook either side and then just, which is what the battery's for, the toolbox, tool, tool kit strap. You know, the one that holds a tool kit underneath your seat. I haven't got that anymore, so I'll just use that. That'll hold the battery in place. And then that will fit in between the frame rails as they are. I can kind of weld it in place and bolt it and thread it. So I've been thinking today, as I was at work, that this is the next task. So stick around, stay tuned, see if I can make that into a battery box. Right. So just to take the lid off, because it's got a hinge, and all hinges have a pin, I will try, first of all. Yeah. One hinge pin and a future piece of weld rod. That'll be handy. I'll just now use that again. There we go. So there's one lid extracted, fabricating already. Actually, already a little bit of a strength thing just to kind of stiffen it up. Now what it's got to be is as wide as the frame rails. So, measuring, right. Marking it so far, just a, a proper scribe line round. Um, problem is that the, the frame rails here are tapered these ones it's going to go between these bottom ones because those those two at the top are going to get um lopped off level with that because the box is going up against that as its front support and then it will get tack welded across the front of it for strength but it's going to go in between these two so they're going to be kind of the support bars with just a little bar underneath to hold them now obviously as they taper i can't cut the box exactly sort of what we're going to do is cut the end off cut off as much of it as I need and then weld it back on but it's going to be easier to actually just slice this in half and trombone the box just expand this out and feed that in it's only thin metal it'll move just slide one inside the other so you kind of trombone it a little bit till it's exactly the right size then I can do it to fit so first of all the old jigsaw with a proper hacksaw blade focus and that should cut that a little bit less noisily and a little bit more simply with less sparks and fuss and a disc.
Two halves don't make a hole. Right. That. Now, strictly speaking, um, I learned this little tip from my good mate Rob in New Hampshire building his hot rod. He did a seat back, a sheet metal seat back for his hot rod that he cut and shut narrowly. Obviously, you should, um, like do when you graft the panel in, you need a nibbler or some sort of press that presses that and folds that metal out slightly so that it accommodates that straight. But this is a rat bike, it doesn't matter. I can make that with a little bit of effort. I've got to trim some bits off the bottom. But I can make that now as narrow as I need to. Or I can put it in the space, expand it out to the space and weld it in so it's going to be exact without trying to get all the measurements right. There we go. Next move. All right, let's tidy this up. Actually make it fit. Right, just trimming these now flush with there because the box is going to sit up against there wide as it can. So that little extra bit now, it's ready to come off now. I'm certain that I want it absolutely flush there. Just going to use the old jigsaw. This is, a, this is as good as a disc, but a bit less messy. cleaned up a little bit now. Now I've drilled the holes just so I can plug weld it. What I would normally want, what would be brilliant, is one of those tools that you grip that edge with and it puts a neat little fold there so it just perfectly goes over the top but I ain't got one so this is what I'm doing. All I've done is I've cut slots in the top and bottom and I'm going to put a combination of inner and outer like that. So it's, this tongue is on the inside, but these are on the outside. So it'll be plug welded inside and out. And if those slots, which I've put in both, go into each other, like that, then that's now already pretty held. So all I've got to do is offer that up to the bike, get the exact width, clamp it, and start zapping it. box. Let's see if it fits. Spin it around. Right, still a bit hot. Little plugs in there holding it. Kind of two hands. There we are. Now, the idea, obviously, Obviously it'll have to sit level because the battery is a regular acid battery. I'm not going to bother paying out for a gel filled battery I can tilt 
when I can just set this up right. There we are. Pretty much battery tray in place. Right, starting to look like a box now. Um, where I had this lip on the lid, I've just cut the lip off, drilled a load of holes in it, and that's going to form where I cut the lid off and the hinge. There's a raw edge, obviously, you are bound to cut yourself on that at some point, so I'm just going to pop that over the top. Literally, just make a folded folded edge on it. Uh, so that it's safe really because you're going to reach in there and mess about with the battery connect this and just use you know, lock pliers just to pinch that in place it also strengthens it up a considerable amount as well Million and one uses for lock pliers. And when this gets welded to the bike, it will be even stronger because it will take on the, the sort of square support of the frame, which will be around it, so it will be rock solid. But for now, Put a little lip on that edge. Okay, just zap weld that on. Here it is, all done. Now, it's messy, but I don't care. It's strong and it's straight. I've got a flat lip around the top of it and that will hold the battery. Now it's gonna go in that space there. That's, that's now the exact length for the top rails. The bottom rails have got a bit extra on there. That's gonna go pretty much there and the battery is going to sit just in quite happy with that really am because if I bring it up as much as I can then the bottom corner will be flush with these tubes so it will sit kind of there and that will mean I'll have all the clearance I need and that will still be with the battery there it'll have a little tailpiece over the top and that will be almost exactly the same height as the tank which is very very important for symmetry and it was matt hodge as i put in the last uh, video that said that the lines of a bike must flow so this angle is important the two heights here are important if the tail unit sits lower or higher than the top of the tank then it looks out killing. it just doesn't look right. So getting this right means that when the tail unit comes in, um, whatever that becomes, whatever kind of tail unit I end up with, uh, it will look right. But there you go, that's getting heavy. Put that back up there. And there we are. One battery box. I don't know whether it's going to go that way or that way, it doesn't really matter too much. I guess if you're going to see that side of it, I don't know, you're not going to see any of it because you have a tail unit over it. But there we are, one tailbox, ready for a battery. Let's bring it down. It's got, obviously like I said, it's got to sit about there, flush with the tubes. It can't come any lower, because I don't want any clearance issues with the tire, I don't want to lose any of that. So it's going to sit about there guess and what that will mean is taking that last little bit of those tubes uh, off 
and then I should take some angline across there. Um, angline is as strong as a tube because angline is quarter inch thick. This tubing, if you look at it, it ain't even what is that? That ain't even three, that ain't even three mil tube. That's two, two and a half mil thick tubing. So a piece of quarter inch angle line across there is gonna be just as strong as it needs to be. And then I can weld that to the box. Um, and I'll probably put some tubing in there, triangulate it a little bit. I've got some bits of tubing in that corner, which I shall be using. Um, and hopefully just put at least one, two, three sort of tubes in there. Just Ducati trellis style, just to hold it from moving around, give it strength and then Something across there, right? Lots more to do. So there we are, though. That was today's little fun task. One battery box ready to go. Here we are. Even hard is it? <laughs> Gary's door just opened itself again. It tends to do that. So there we are. Thanks for tuning in, Aussie Devils Garage. I appreciate it. Just a little bit more fun. That was. Two hours, two and a half hours in the garage, pennies in any minute, so time to get dinner on. Take it easy, ride safe. I'll see you for the next one.